Here's what we teach in leadership skills. Don't mistake courtesy for consent. In a polite society, we learn sometimes to be courteous, but that doesn't mean we buy the story. With somebody being polite, smiling and nodding, you got to make sure you don't misread that and stop short of the full persuasion. Don't mistake kindness for acceptance. In a polite society, we've learned to be kind, but that doesn't mean we've accepted. So part of this is a little more subtle in reading in a polite society, whether or not somebody is buying your argument, if they're being persuaded by your presentation. So body language, picking up those signals. Now here's the one that's probably the most effective, but it's probably the most elusive, reading the emotional signals. This is an area probably where the women have it over the men picking up the emotional signals. I think men can learn these skills, but I think women have a lot of this automatically. Men can learn it, but it's something we all have to learn. Emotional signals, picking up the signals of whether to change your language, be sharper or to be softer, to go after a problem or to ease back and give it time to soak. Part of this is just picking up the feelings, picking up the emotions, being sensitive to the situation. This is not easy stuff. This is extra learning stuff, extra skills. But this is called summit learning for those extra measures of rewards that come from communicating by learning these extra skills. So third, very important to read your audience. How are you coming across? What is the effect from a child to an auditorium full of people? Reading, reading. Here's the fourth step to good communication. Number one, have something good to say. Number two, say it well. Number three, read your audience. Number four, intensity. Here now starts the power of what we say. Part of the strength of what we say is the words we choose. The greater part of the strength of what we say is the emotions that are loaded into the words. Here's what has power unmatched, words loaded with emotion. There is no greater power. Words have an effect, but words loaded with emotion have an incredible effect. My words may reach you, but if I can't touch you with my spirit, if I can't touch you with my emotions, my feelings, my beliefs, then I probably haven't affected you very much. We might describe words like a little straight pin. Right? Guy buys a shirt. It's got all these little pins in it, right? If I took one of those little straight pins and I threw it at you and it hit you in the face or the hand, you'd probably feel it, this little straight pin. That means I got you with my words. But what if I took that little straight pin and wired it to the end of an iron bar <laughs> and I let you have it with that? See, I can drive the pin through your heart. Now, the reason I can do that is because the pin is the words, but the iron bar is the emotions, the feelings, the belief, the commitment, all that I am, if I can put more of what I am into what I say, no telling what miracle I can rot, no telling how much of an effect I can be. Real persuasion comes from putting you into what you say. But now here's part of the clue, and we call these extra refinement of leadership skills, Learning to measure your emotions. That's very important to learn to measure your emotions. We teach, don't shoot a cannon at a rabbit. It's effective, but you've got no more rabbit. <laughs> it's called too much firepower for the occasion. You don't need an atomic explosion for a minor point. Enough, but not too much. We call this understanding how to measure the flow of your emotions to cover a point, okay? But if it needs heavyweight stuff, you reach and get it. If it needs a milder approach, you learn how to measure it in milder, easier terms. But it's very important to measure your emotions, your feelings. Now, what do we mean by intensity and emotions? Here it is. All of your experiences and how they've affected you, that's the sum total of your emotional content. Where you've been and what you've heard and what you've seen and who you've met and this whole panorama of life experiences for you up until now and how you felt about all that. That we call the sum total of your emotions. Now the key is to learn how to measure all that and put it in effective amounts into the words you choose. So here's the key to effective communications. 
well-chosen words loaded with well-measured emotions in the gift of a performance of an actor or an actress. The splendid performance comes from knowing with skill how to use language and how to use emotions. When the time calls for it, emotions kept close to the surface, put into well-chosen words, can make the most dramatic effect on somebody's mind and somebody's heart. You can't believe the extent of your reach if you will engage in some of these communication skills.